All right, we've looked at the world and identified some of its most important elements. We learned about land. Without it, human life as we know it couldn't exist. Trust me, I've tried. Somebody help me! That's why we study geology and geomorphology. We learn about water. Once again, without it, we couldn't exist. That's why we learned about hydrology. Air and sunlight are also absolutely necessary if we want to live. We looked at how air behaves and how sunlight manages the temperature of the earth when we considered meteorology and climatology. You would think that's enough for life, but not quite. Now we need to talk about another critical ingredient that makes life possible. And it's probably one you haven't really thought about. Soil. You know, dirt. And guess what? Soil is directly tied to almost every other aspect of physical geography. In many ways, soil is the element that draws all the branches of physical geography together. Kind of like how my mother-in-law drags us all to the same pageant every year to draw us together. What is soil exactly? Well, it's a mix of a lot of crap. Yeah, even that kind of crap. But let's start with the least crappy. Soil includes pieces of rocks and minerals, so it's connected to geology. It also mixes in liquids, so it's connected to hydrology. And it's made of plants and animals, including their, you know what. So it's connected to biogeography. Ultimately, soil is connected to human geography too. Think about it. Soil gives us food, the plants we eat grow in it, it gives us clothing, lots of the materials we use for our clothes grow from soil, it provides our shelter, from soil we get the materials we build our houses and apartment buildings with. We might not think about soil as much as farmers do. But as we try to get a better picture of the world through geography, it's worth thinking about a little bit more. It's connected to just about every aspect of your life in some way. In physical geography, there's a name for the study of soil, pedology. Once again, we've been gifted a lovely word from the ancient Greeks. Pedology comes from the Greek word pedon, which means, wanna guess? Yep, soil. The science of pedology helps tell us what soil is and where it came from. And believe it or not, soil comes in tons of different varieties. There are even more types of soil than there are types of coffee at Starbucks. That's at least like three types of soil. But almost all types of soil taste like dirt. Go figure. But don't worry. We're going to teach you an easier way of figuring out what kind of dirt you're dealing with. You can group the particles that make up soil into three general categories that are determined by the size of those particles. These categories are sand, silt, and clay. Of these three, sand particles are the largest and clay particles the smallest, which means that silt is the neglected middle child. Now by combining different amounts of sand, silt, and clay, you can create all sorts of combinations of soil. Most soil you find isn't only sand, all clay, or nothing but silt. Almost always, soil is going to be some type of combination of these three types of particles. Depending on what combination a soil has, that particular soil is going to have different qualities and attributes, including a specific texture and structure. There are different names for the mixes, usually some combination of the words sand and silt and clay, creative things like sandy clay, which is coincidentally the name of the color I painted on my bathroom. The mix of particles in your soil give it not only a fun name, but also its own texture and structure, which give it special soil powers. For instance, one of the soil's most important roles is to grow plants, which give us food. So if your goal is a food farm and not just a dirt farm, certain types of soil will be good for this and others will not be so good. A farmer wants a kind of soil that we call loam or soil with a loamy texture. This soil has a nice equal mix of sand, silt, and clay. It's best at holding water and nutrients that are essential for growing food. 
Loam is also a term often used in identifying certain types of soil. You get fun things like loamy sand or silty clay loam. Something to think about if you're ever looking for fun baby names. Anytime your soil has too much sand, too much silt, or too much clay, you get closer to what we call single grain soil. These types of soils aren't great at growing plants, particularly food plants. Food plants need a lot of water and nutrients. See, diversity is even important for soil. Listen and learn, human race. Think about sand. Have you ever seen trees or vegetables growing on the beach? Me neither. It doesn't work because soil with too much of a sandy texture makes pretty lousy farmland. The soil particles are too big and water drains out too fast. Not to mention, the water is full of salt. If soil is mostly clay, then it becomes very, very thick and the water doesn't soak in very well. Then, the water will start to gather on top of the soil. This is how lakes and ponds are formed. No matter what the mix of soil particles are, the soil you find almost always is a combination of four key ingredients. First is minerals. Usually, this means the little particles that break away from rocks over time. Second is organisms and organic matter. When an animal or plant dies, may their poor souls rest in peace. Their physical bodies decompose, meaning the elements in their bodies start to break apart. These elements then mix into the soil. Also, all animals, you know, poop and stuff. Eventually, that gets broken down and mixed into the soil too. Dead organisms, or organism poop, aren't the only parts of soil that come from living things. There are millions and millions of currently living organisms in the soil too, including bacteria, small worms, and other tiny things. In fact, soil is so full of life that there are more than a billion organisms in a single teaspoon of soil. That's almost five organisms. Yup. The third ingredient of soil is air, and the fourth is water. These four ingredients come in many combinations, and depending on what their balance is, will determine whether the soil is more sand, silt, clay, or a good loamy mix of all three. The way these four ingredients react with one another is what makes certain places great for life and other places more difficult for life, like my mother-in-law's house. Take a moment to think about how much soil impacts your life. You owe so much of your life to soil and your ingratitude is displeasing to the soil. Have you ever been in a building with cement and wood and lumber and stuff? Think soil. Every building and house is built on top of soil. You know what happens when engineers don't take the time to properly think about what kind of soil they build on? That. You get buildings that fall down because the soil can't support it. You like food? Soil. Oh, but what about meat? Meat doesn't grow out of the ground. Meat eats food that grows in the ground. Soil. Socks, underwear, caught in anything. A lot of that textiles that make your clothes grown in soil. You like books, paper, trees, which come from soil. There's no escaping it. Soil is an essential piece of this world. And that is why Pedology is one of the most important pieces to our physical geography puzzle. Thanks, Soil. Hey, wanna hear a uh, geography joke? All right, what's smarter, longitude or latitude? Longitude, why? Because it has 360 degrees. Yeah, get off the stage! What? It's not a bad joke, come on. Anyway, we've got more than jokes. Come to Engage Global Storytelling you can learn about the world, countries, cultures, peoples, places, geography, and any other geography you want. So, hope to see you. Thanks.